Good morning and welcome to St. Michael and All Angels. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. At this time, the children will follow the cross to Children's Chapel. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Give us grace, O Lord, to answer readily the call of our Savior, Jesus Christ, and proclaim to all people the good news of his salvation, that we and the whole world may perceive the glory of his marvelous works, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. A reading from the prophet Isaiah. There will be no gloom for those who were in anguish. In the former time, he brought into contempt the land of Zebulun and the land of Naphtali. But in latter time, he will make glorious the way of the sea, the land beyond Jordan, Galilee of the nations. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who lived in a land of deep darkness, on them light has shined. You have multiplied the nation. You have increased its joy. They rejoice before you as with joy at the harvest, as people exult when dividing plunder for the yoke of their burden and the bar across their shoulders, the rod of their oppressor, you have broken as on the day of Midian. The word of the Lord. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Now when Jesus heard that John had been arrested, he withdrew to Galilee. He left Nazareth and made his home in Capernaum by the sea, in the territory of Zebulun and Naphtali, so that what had been spoken through the prophet Isaiah might be fulfilled. Land of Zebulun, land of Naphtali, 
on the road by the sea across the Jordan, Galilee of the Gentiles. The people who sat in darkness have seen a great light. And for those who sat in the region and shadow of death, light has dawned. From that time, Jesus began to proclaim, repent, for the kingdom of heaven has come near. As he walked by the Sea of Galilee, he saw two brothers, Simon, who was called Peter, and Andrew, his brother, casting a net into the sea, for they were fishermen. And he said to them, follow me, and I will make you fish for people. Immediately they left their nets and followed him. As he went from there, he saw two other brothers, James, son of Zebedee, and his brother John, in the boat with their father Zebedee, mending their nets. And he called them. Immediately they left the boat and their father and followed him. Jesus went through Galilee, teaching in their synagogues and proclaiming the good news of the kingdom and curing every disease and every sickness among the people. The Gospel of the Lord. The people who sat in darkness have seen a great light, and for those who sat in the region in shadow of death, light has dawned. Please be seated. I'd like to cast an image for just a moment. The liturgy of the Episcopal Church, what we call our service, our worship, sometimes distills something into such a pure form, it would be a shame to miss it. So some of you know that Holy Week is that week right before Easter. Uh, this year, I think it begins on April 6th and runs through April 12th. And each day has a particular kind of look leading up to that great and glorious day of Easter. And on the night before Easter, we've observed Holy Saturday, we've had the quiet of the tomb, and actually the first service of Easter is the Easter vigil, which happens in the early evening of the n night before Easter. And the church is dark, and the people are outside, and a flame is kindled. And then the celebrant blesses that flame, the paschal candle is lit, and then we begin as a people to process into the darkened church. It's as though the light of Christ is illuminating the tomb itself. And leading the procession is a deacon, who at different points in the church chants at the doorway, at the center of the church, and before the altar. And the chant is, the light of Christ. And all the people reply, thanks be to God. And we hear that echoing through the walls of our church until finally the story of salvation begins in the baptism and we have the full Eucharist. And I start with that because that's the image I think that Isaiah and Matthew are trying to kindle, the sense that there is a darkness, a death, a blindness, and into that the Christ walks illuminating what before had been invisible. And in the season of Epiphany, which we're in now, what I want you to pay attention to is every Sunday, the gospel lesson shines a light on who Christ is. Not merely Jesus, but Son of God, King of kings, Lord of lords. And every gospel lesson is a revealing of who this Christ is. So what is Matthew's gospel lesson trying to show us? What is the revelation, the showing forth of Jesus that Matthew's trying to do? Well, if you pay attention... It starts with the fact that John the Baptist has just been arrested. And what you need to know about John is people thought this was the Messiah. No matter how hard he tried to turn it away, to deflect attention elsewhere, people believed that John was the Messiah. 
So when he's arrested by Herod and eventually beheaded, you can imagine the grief, not only among his close followers, but those who had gone out into the wilderness to be baptized. So John is arrested, and it's fascinating that at that moment, Jesus takes his cue to begin his public ministry. I suggest to you that Jesus' actions are never accidental. They are always intentional to reveal something about who God is and who he is in God. If you look throughout the New Testament, decision after decision, it carries a symbolic meaning. And so here we have Jesus moving from Nazareth, which was a little town, a little Jewish town, not well known um, within the world stage. And Jesus moves from Nazareth to Capernaum. Now, according to the Jewish religious leaders, Capernaum, uh, Zebulun and Naphtali, as we heard, is considered a land of darkness. Why? Because there is Gentile influence there. There's a mixing of pagan practices and Jewish practices. And so in a sense, it's an impure area. It would be kind of like the northeast of the United States, not saying they're impure, but I'm showing you on a map. (laughs) Sorry, New York. On a map, it would be kind of like the northeast of the United States, and that area is considered unclean. But here's what Jesus knew about Capernaum. It is fertile, it is populous, and any message that is proclaimed in that area will go to all the regions of the world. Jesus is a marketer of sorts in the best sense of the word. And so he goes to Capernaum and he shares the good news there and it begins to go to the four ends of the earth because of the location. That was on purpose. Furthermore, the first words out of his mouth after his baptism, his temptation in the wilderness is, repent, the kingdom of heaven has come near. Sound familiar? The prophets, but more importantly, John the Baptist. What Jesus said is, I am not only continuing the tradition of John, I am the fulfillment of his message. Pay attention. So his location, his timing, and his message are all pointing to the fact that he is the light that has come into the world. So now that he has our attention, now the question is, what does he do? Well, he calls disciples to himself. And this story always cracks me up. It makes it sound like he's wandering along. There's these poor strangers. He says, follow me. They drop everything and follow him. That is not how life works. Jesus has been in Capernaum. He's been cultivating relationships. He's been making friends. And symbolically, he wants the world to know the people who follow me are not going to be the religious elite. They are not going to be the political leaders. They are not going to be the muckety-mucks. They are going to be the people from the earth, the fishermen, the tax collectors who are despised, the women of ill repute. These are the ones that Jesus calls to himself. No accident. Entirely consistent with his message to the world. And so, with that ground tilled, he then says to these four, follow me, and Peter, Andrew, James, and John, get up and follow him. And what do they do? Immediately, the mission statement is clear, proclaim the good news and heal the sick. So in this little message from Matthew, you, in a sense, have a mission statement, a strategic vision. You know where you're going, and everything, every choice that has been made is consistent with that intention. So we at St. Michael would be wise to ask ourselves, what is our mission? Where are we going? What are we doing? Who are we following? What is our purpose? Critical questions, not only for St. Michael, but every organization to find one's identity so that you can be effective in the world. And St. Michael has done this from time to time. It is customary every 10 years, 15 years, to do a careful look at what are we called to do and be in light of Christ. And that process is beginning subtly now, not in a formal way so much, but executive staff are asking that question. And, And a group that's thinking about the future of our physical plant and our buildings and our land are asking that question and the rector is continually putting before us what are we focused on 
And so I want to share with you a few things I have gleaned in my six months here. Some of them are explicit, some of them are implicit. You see if these sound right to you, and then also be thinking, what do I do at St. Michael? What's my level of engagement? Where am I reflecting these things, or might I add something else? St. Michael loves children. St. Michael Episcopal School, the cherubs, the choristers, godly play, so much of what we do is so that children have a safe place to grow up and learn the faith. It's critical to our identity. Love of learning. Our story on Sunday morning, Bible studies throughout the week, special speakers, you are a people who are curious, who ask questions, who wonder that activity of the mind is critical to you. Never let that go. Love of beauty, elegant worship, world-class music, stained windows that take your breath away. Everything around you speaks to the beauty of heaven. That's not accidental, that's on purpose. And it may be in the coming months and years, you will have an opportunity to even go further into the realm of beauty at St. Michael. And love of service. Love of service. You, without a lot of hoopla, you go out into the world and you do things that make people's lives better. Yes, we have volunteer guilds, international missions, local outreach, but one of the things I notice is that you just pay attention to each other. Oh, did you hear she had surgery? We're going to pray for her. The little things you do for one another to let everyone know that they're part of a fabric, they're part of a network, that we're not alone in this world, that is your genius as St. Michael. An example I think of is, you may not know, but we have funerals um, regularly, and the way we do that with people is beautiful. There are guilds that are tasked with flowers, with cookie receptions, with altar Little touches that that one who is grieving, whose life is broken open, they can kind of be received into the arms of St. Michael and know that this sending off is going to be filled with beauty. And to those of you who are part of that funeral process, thank you. And Bob Scott especially. Jesus was clear about his mission. Every action he took supported it. The Episcopal Church is clear about its mission. You may not know it, but in our catechism of the Book of Common Prayer, this is what our mission is, to restore all people to unity with God and each other in Christ. That's our global mission, and now the question is, how do we live out that local mission at St. Michael? The light of Christ, though, I suggest, stands at the center of whatever we do. The Easter Vigil reveals that liturgically, but now as you go from this place, I want you to have that image of the candle burning at the center of our darkened church and ask yourself, how does the light of Christ change me? How does it orient me to a world in need? And then go and follow Jesus. Amen. Let us stand together and say the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. 
we acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The prayers of the people are form six, beginning on page four of the worship bulletin. In peace, we pray to you, Lord God. For all people in their daily life and work, for our families, friends, and neighbors, and for those who are alone. For this community, the nation, and the world, for all justice, freedom, and peace. For the just and proper use of your creation. For the hunger, fear, and justice, and oppression. For all who are in danger, sorrow, or any kind of trouble. For those who have the sick, the and the needy. For the peace and unity of the Church of God. For Justin, Archbishop of Canterbury, Michael, our presiding bishop, George and Michael, our bishops, our parish clergy and their families, and for all bishops and other ministers. For all who serve God in his church. For the special needs and concerns of this congregation, in addition to those listed in the parish prayers of the people, Robert Johnston, Jr., George Lorch, Robert Lorch, Melissa Moi de Rivera. Hear us, Lord. Your mercy is great. We thank you, Lord, for all the blessings of this life. We bless the joyous union of Hilary Worthman and Michael Schwamm. In the diocesan cycle of prayer, we pray for St. John's Corsicana, Christ Church, Dallas, Good Samaritan, Dallas. We will exalt you, O God, our King, and praise your name forever and ever. We pray for all who have died, especially Jim Farah, MD, Gerald Jerry Finnan, Rita May Grusing, Mary Louise Montalongo, J. Fred Sholkoff III, and Richard Flora that they may have a place in your eternal kingdom. Lord, let your loving kindness be upon them. Almighty and eternal God, ruler of all things in heaven and earth, mercifully accept the prayers of your people and strengthen us to do your will. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us, deliver us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Let us stand together. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Peace be with you. Are you okay? He's ready. He's ready. God's peace be with you. Good morning once again, everyone. 
Welcome to St. Michael on this beautiful Sunday, even though it's overcast. We're glad that you are here to worship with us. If you're new or visiting, please know you're very welcome this morning. We'd love to get to know you better. So grab the welcome card that you can find in the pew back in front of you. Fill that card out and drop it in the offering plate or hand one to an usher after the service. And we will be in touch about ways that you can connect to this community. And speaking of connection, we've got a St. Michael 101 luncheon that's going to happen on February 2nd. And that's an excellent opportunity for anyone to go deeper into this community. If you are thinking about participating in this community, maybe reconnecting or connecting more so, we'd love for you to join us for that lunch. That's going to be Sunday, February 2nd, after our 11 o'clock services. On, on the back of your bulletin, there's a great little sheet. I'd love for you to turn and look at it because it's all the announcements I'm making today. And it's always nice to be able to see something as someone's talking. So we've got that luncheon coming up on the 2nd. We've got the Women of St. Michael Mardi Gras party coming up on February 21st. Both will be fantastic events. We hope that you will bring a friend and join us for those. Also looking ahead, tonight is our Winter St. Michael Presents concert, and we will be welcoming the choir, men, boys, and girls of the Cathedral in Salt Lake City of the Madeline. They are fantastic. They are going to be singing for us at 11 o'clock, and then again this concert tonight here in the church at 7 o'clock. It is a free event, and we would love for you to join us. And speaking of, we have members of our adult choir here this morning who typically sing at 11, so thank you all for being here today to help enrich our worship. The 11 o'clock service is going to be our guests, and so the adults just politely flip to 9 o'clock, so we're glad that you are here. Um, Also, as part of our music program growth, we have more than 60 children now singing in our children's choirs, and we would love for you all to consider putting your children in these choirs as well. There are auditions that are coming up in your bulletin. You can see that information. And audition is a little scary. It's really nothing more than come have your kids sing for our music directors because they get a chance to hear their voice figure out how they can help them grow as singers here at St. Michael. And so please consider if you've got some kids in your life to connect them with our Chorister program and our Cherub program, which is for preschool and early elementary. And information is also in your bulletin about how you can connect with that fun Wednesday afternoon and evening activity here at St. Michael. Finally, this week, we end our stewardship season for 2021. I'm sorry, for 2020. I'm already a year ahead of myself. This is only 2020. We are going to be doing what we can to help the people here in our community, both within and without this church community. And as we plan those ministries and mission opportunities, we want to make sure that your support counts. And so if you've already given your pledge for 2020, thank you. And if you haven't yet, please get it in this week so that we can collect as much as we can in our resources to do the most good that we can in our world. And there's information in your bulletin. You can go online to St. Michael.org slash give or grab one of our pledge cards around the church this week so that we can make sure that your support counts. Now join me in prayer over our prayer shawls. As Ken mentioned in his sermon, we care for our people in many, many different ways. And there is a group of people in our church that make shawls every week. And we deliver these shawls to people both in our community and friends of this community who are ill or sick or in recovery. And it's a beautiful thing. And so occasionally on Sundays, we pray and bless these shawls and then give you a chance to kind of touch them as you come up for communion. It's a great thing that we do here. And so join me in prayer over these shawls today. Let us pray. God, we give you thanks for the hands who make these shawls, that they be filled with your spirit and wrap your healing touch around all those in our community and outside our community who need it most. All this we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Remember the concert tonight? It's going to be great. Let's continue our worship. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us, an offering and a sacrifice to God.
lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, because in the mystery of the word made flesh, you have caused a new light to shine in our hearts, to give the knowledge of your glory in the face of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. We give thanks to you, O God, for the goodness and love which you have made known to us in creation, in the calling of Israel to be your people, in your word spoken through the prophets, and above all, in the word made flesh, Jesus, your Son. For in these last days you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. In him you have delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you. In him you have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. On the night before he died for us, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, according to his command, O Father, we, we remember his death, death. We, we proclaim, proclaim his, his resurrection, resurrection. We, we await his coming in glory. glory. And we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your Son and his sacrifice, that we may be acceptable through him, being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, put all things in subjection under your Christ and bring us to that heavenly country where with St. Michael and all your saints, we may enter the everlasting heritage of your sons and daughters through Jesus Christ, our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church and the author of our salvation. By him and with him and in him in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now as our Christ has taught us, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen.
gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving.
Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart through Christ our Lord. Amen. The blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Oh, yeah.